everyone and welcome back to my channel. I am Nelson, you're watching HNL, and if you're new to my channel, thank you so much for stopping by. Today, as I always say, my favorite episodes of What's in Bloom, and I am bringing you a second episode this month because we are in spring, and you know what? Like Smokey says, keep it green. As I say, keep it green. It is amazing back there. Everything is luscious, everything is blooming, everything is looking perfect and there's so much to show i don't know if i'll get to it all today because i don't want to make this a extremely long and extended episode i've been putting out a lot of those lately <laughs> like the last one if you guys haven't seen my anniversary special god did i have a great time my friends were there ah, the sun's pretty <laughs> it's pretty strong today <laughs> i'm trying not to squint too much my friends were there with me at the Fairchild Tropical uh, Botanical Gardens. It was beautiful. What a wonderful day. We were so giddy the whole time. Had a wonderful time shopping and just walking around. I'm going to share with you guys what I got. I didn't get much, so I'm going to kind of include it in this What's in Bloom. So that way you can kind of see what I got. But I think I got only three things. Hopefully I won't forget those three things <laughs> and get too caught up in my blooms. Ooh, the mosquitoes are already starting and it's early morning. <laughs> Anyways, without further ado, let's go look at some blooms with squinty eyes. <laughs> All right, my friends, so let's start here where we usually start now, which is right dead center in the front of my grow house. And I will start by saying that this is probably gonna be one of the best spring episodes I've ever uploaded because everywhere i look there is not just blooms but an incredible amount of blooms everything right now it's coming out to say hello to spring and it's just breathtaking here i am been so inspired by my home visits by mercedes maria which that's coming up very soon i did pay her visit a, a couple of weeks ago I haven't released it yet. I had already released Mercedes Home Visit, such an incredible master grower, and she inspired me to do these things. And Maria gave me my very first one, which is the second one. So both of them inspired me highly to do these sort of environments. Of course, I gave it my own twist, and I always inspire people to do the same. You know, you can take ideas from me, from my channel, but add your own twist. So that way it becomes your style, you know, your creation, um, inspired by somebody else. But look at this, guys. Look at my chocolate antlers, how beautiful they're doing. Let me see if I put a little bit of, yeah, that works a little better. It is exploding. I got this at Udeli's, a local nursery. They have been carrying great, great dendrobiums. This is a beautiful example of this. I bought this, I think I got it oh, a year ago, maybe. A year ago around this time, but look at the size of that. It comes all the way, it's all the way down there. And then it goes all, it started just shooting as soon as I put it out here in the sun. Now I did acclimate it. Best time to acclimate is fall and winter if you're in Florida. Sun's very strong. As you can see, the light hits right there. The sun is right above the tree. So I keep some branches to filter out too much of a song, uh, of a song, of a strong, uh, bright, direct light. But yet I have a section, as you see over there, where I have my Schomburkias and my Bromeliad, uh, Bougainvillea, bonsais we just finished doing that area i don't know if you guys recall go back to my older older videos and you'll see that all that wood that you see there was completely placed wrong <laughs> so we did stadium sating uh steep why am i trying to talk so fast today as if i'm on a time limit stadium seating <laughs> uh type of style and then i i put all my bigger sun loving uh orchids there and behind that fence, we're going to remove it, but we decided to keep it. And that's a surprise for the future. But it's a great spot for what I want. But anyways, let's continue. Right underneath is this gorgeous 
all yellow dendrobium. I also got this at Udeli's recently and it is finally blooming. Look at what a beauty this is. Now, this came without an, no, I'm lying. It came with a name. Uh, she had written it down for me. Rumfeldii. Yeah, because when she had them, I think she, she was writing the names. It, this was, at, actually both of these I bought at Ophi's, at the Orchid Festival at Ophi's. So if you guys haven't been, you're really missing out. You'll always find really, really good stuff really good stuff and it's this, and the local uh nurseries that go to the international shows they carry the same stuff at ofi so it's like going to an international show without the international <laughs> vendors and kind of seeing the same great stuff that the local vendors here in miami and in the redlands have to offer now this beauty here i got from this lady vanda it is still acclimating and i wanted to show you guys you see how the leaves are a bit dehydrated well they were worse but I've been watering these every single day. When you get these sun or semi-sun loving um, orchids, make sure that you um, hydrate those roots very well. You know, some people put them in buckets of water for like an hour or two, just so it soaks up a lot and then hang them. It also makes the roots very pliable so you don't break them. See, I did that here. And they do suffer. I mean, they do lose some leaves in the bottom because the acclimation period for these sun-loving plants takes a while. This one took a while and now it's three years old and look how beautiful it looks. This is a Mokara Sunspots. Let me see. There we go, mama. You look gorgeous. What a great profile. <laughs> yeah, this one was a gift from Laz at the Tam Miami show. And uh, it's always bloomed. It blooms and blooms. And all these towers, as you guys see, they're different types of, of plants. I'm doing like all kinds of, like this is all spe uh, species. As you can see, this is one of the ones that I got at Backyard Bloom. All these are species. This was an anniversary gift from Blooming Paradise from Anna. If you guys haven't seen my anniversary video yet, check it out it's it's a lot of fun and i did extra special editing and things i got to make it you know unique to its anniversary it's three years that i've turned uh turned into turned this channel um three years ago and i always go to fairchild because that's where it first started there we go so this was a gift from anna i really wanted a tolumnia and i was buying i was actually buying a tolumnia for a piece that amount hold on amount that um that's the name my nails are dirty i'm sorry i've been working back here and fixing and cleaning leaves the leaves were too full of spots because i've been feeding you know it's spring so spring has sprung and we gotta clean up <laughs> So she gave me this as a gift. She goes, no, no, I want to give you this because this is my new thing. I'm, I'm cutting grape, um, grape wood, grape, uh, sea grape wood. And it's really tough wood. And she says the, the mokara, mokaras. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I don't know. I guess it's because I literally just took my last cup of coffee. And I'm like, blah, blah, blah. my brain is going at a thousand miles an hour and it's early, early in the morning. So I'm fresh and energized. So anyway, she gave me this as a gift. So I, of course, I can't take it out of here and put it on Justine's beautiful mount, which I have here, empty and waiting. <laughs> it's like, hello, when are you gonna put something on me? I promise, I'm going to Apopka to the big festival now in April. It's gonna be my birthday weekend. So I think I'm definitely going to find something there. And I'm also going to pay a visit to um, Pam at uh, Bloom, uh, Orchids in Bloom. And uh, I'm sure I'll find something there as well. Now, this is from Pam from Orchids in Bloom. And I got this at the last international show, their very first international show that they've done. That's the last show I went to, big show. And um, I fell in love with this. And this... Catlia has such an incredible citrusy smell. I could smell it from here. 
it fills this whole area up with fragrance. It's a really, really beautiful one. I think she had plenty of more of these. Um, I thought she didn't have any more because at the show she only had three, but I saw recently that she, um, you know what? This tag is gonna fly away because I know I put them like lightly and I say, oh, I'm gonna come back and, and tighten it and then I forget. And that's when I'm like, it had a tag, but now it's gone. See, it's not even, thing is that this is already, this this Catlia is ready for replanting. When you see that the, that the sides, oh, come on phone, cooperate, please. Um, the sides are that congested and the roots are already so stuck that you can't even put a tag. It's time. It's time to pull that puppy, put it into a wet it really well and put it into a bigger pot. So I do have it here just for stability. So now right next to it, I am so happy this is blooming. This is from the orchid done from Josh. And he was at the Redland International Show and had a couple of these. And these puppies went so fast on the first day. And I took, I think the second, actually no, I remember now what happened. There was only like three left. I think Terry may have taken one, I'm not sure. Or I think she regrets not taking one. And um, he told me, you know what? Somebody had told me they were gonna come back for this. They, they were already closing, the whole show was closing uh, for the day. And he said, and somebody had me hold this for them. It's a really nice size. Look at this. I mean, it's gotten way bigger since I got it. This is new. He said, it's, it has two nice uh, canes and it already has a spike ready to bloom. So it was this one. He goes, and the guy never came and picked it up. And I don't want to hold it till tomorrow. So if you want, it's yours. So I bought this one and it is absolutely beautiful. And this is what they call this uh, blue twist. Dendrobium blue twist. See those spots, guys? You guys have been asking me, what are those spots on your leaves? That's just calcium deposit and fertilizer from, from the water. We use well water here. So the water is very alkaline because it runs through a lime rock. So that lime rock is what you're seeing. It's dusted lime rock. And it's also very, very high in calcium, which my fish love it. Oh, I can't skip you, little girl gonna be a long video i think it's gonna be a one hour video i'm gonna to try to make it you know edit where i can fit everything but this is what they call a trichoglottis rosea varied brevary i can never say that Bre you know what brariana i think is <laughs> here we go let's make it easier on me and this i got from smiley three years ago at Ophi's, which we miss Smiley and spring water at Ophi's. They used to come a lot in Equajenera. And let me tell you, we used to bank. <laughs> we used to buy so much from them because they were, it was like having them all to ourselves at this show. And we would get some very rare things and minis, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> get a, all these kind of cool looking plants. And I've had this now, I would say three years. It was in the beginning when I started my, my channel. It's such a pretty flower. Let me see if I can get up close and personal without her being too shy and going out of focus. Oh, look at you, mama. You're so beautiful. She is really pretty. And I love the fact that I kept here in this corner and it just happened like, I guess, I don't say by chance. I think subconsciously you do things. But I put this here, which is the same color as that, and my dendrobium, which is already like kind of gone. I mean, you can see one one flower. They all had, they all have the same color tone. They look very pretty. This I'll show you um, on a video. I got this at the Fairchild uh, Gardens. I don't remember who I got it from. If it was Vicky's Orchids or Udeli's, I just don't remember. But. This Oncidium, guys, is massive. The flower is super big. And I just had to have one. Now, they didn't have tags. We we're all very upset about that. So I'm gonna try to get a name. But other than that, I'll show you guys um, the video of the flower. Now here in this little section here, these I've already shown. So if you guys are interested in seeing these, my last What's in Bloom, I talked about but I didn't talk about this other dendy. Look how gorgeous this is. 
when I went to visit um, Udeli's, I think for, sorry, my coffee, you, can you guys see? Look, I can't even hold a flower. I'm, I'm shaking so much. <laughs> I'm so weak for caffeine. But anyways, I went to Udeli's with um, Teresita and we did a whole video. If you guys go back, it's a couple of weeks, months ago. And she had these and I'm like, oh my God, what is that? And she goes, oh, I have no more, but I can probably check and see if I can get you some. So she did, and she got me this one. This is a, oh my God, I can't believe it. Literally just, see these tags? They just, they just weather. This is only a year old and look at this. So now I have to do a new tag of mine. And that hiccup that you guys see, that's not me, guys. That's just Apple. <laughs> Apple's iPhone. I don't know why they haven't fixed that glitch. Even their new their new, mo the new version still does it. My friend Blanca got one, and she hates it, too. She goes, why does it do that? I go, eh, they all do that. <laughs> oh, no, no, we can't pass you two. I'm, like, ready to go into the screen room. Look at my black comet. Is this not a gorgeous, gorgeous flower, guys? I got this again from Anna last year at Fairchild, my last anniversary. Funny, I just realized I got something from her every year that I see her. That's the name of the... And look what a healthy plant that is. And yes, I cleaned all my leaves for you guys. I said, I can't do a what's in bloom with all... I, I literally fed like two days ago. And my God, the leaves were so white. I'm like, I gotta, I gotta clean these leaves. I have to wipe them down and just. And the thing is that they're, you know, they're shiny and 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 new now. But tomorrow, when I <laughs> wet this again, that's gonna be gone. I mean, it'll last a couple of days, and then it'll start going back to like these little spots. See. So this is a black comet, and this I got from that gentleman. Now I know I have a tag for this. Hold on. It's just a little tiny, tiny, tiny tag. And I, he's an international um, grower from, oh my God, is he from Thailand? I don't know. But anyways, his name is Wilson Orchids. And he has all these super, super cool fowls. Now, I believe it's Wilson. I have to double check. But because uh, his tags don't have a name. But isn't that beautiful, guys? I haven't checked to see if it's fragrant. But it's so pretty. It's the first time it blooms. And yeah, you see it in lava rock. I know some of you are going to say, I notice your files are in lava rock. They're not. They're in spag moss. Like that. And those lava rocks fell from my towers and I figured, oh, it'll look nice on top <laughs> and it'll add some weight. Wait, where am I going? I can't miss this. Hold on. <clears throat> I put it precisely here because I didn't want to forget I have it inside, but this is not what I want to show you. This I have on my last What's in Bloom, which is called a lava rock, but guys, look at what a, my God, this wind really picked up all of a sudden. Look at what a beautiful gift this was. There's actually me opening it, uh, the surprise at the Fairchild Garden. So you'll see it in that video towards the beginning. And this came from Farida. She ordered it. And Roxy from Orchids365 created this. This is one of her 3D printed um, baskets. I guess that's what you call them, basket or box. I really like these because she has the ones that are like... Um, almost like a sleeve and you use it for your vandas but this I can use for any other cat Leah so I I get to see which one I'm gonna put I was gonna put um one that I got where is it where is it oh, I can't remember where I put it well anyway I thought it would be a good size but I think I'm just gonna try to hunt for a nice nice cat Leah that goes on this so for Rita and Roxy thank you so much for my beautiful anniversary gift. I thought this looked cute here for now because this is going to go on that um, sconce that 
another viewer of mine gave me, Roxana. So I'm going to buy a bunch of these and put them in there. But this, I got to see what I, I'm going to put in it because it's very special. All right, now let's go this way. <laughs> now, I did show this in my last What's in Bloom. So if you guys want to see this trichoglottis uh, trico or Kidea, I think it's how you pronounce it, or Kidea. Um, see how the leaves are? I didn't get a chance to clean these. They're just too much. They're too thin. It's a lot of work. But that's it doesn't hurt the plant, guys. It's completely fine. Now, let me go right here to this beautiful Ascacenda Tavava. This is the most fruit loop smelling flower you will ever come across. This is from Ben Yang from Mr. Ben. This is one of his specialties there that he has. Now, I wanted this so, so bad, but he always had these tiny little cuttings or divisions. And one day he told me, listen, it'll grow. It'll grow into that size before you know it. So I did take it and look, guys, look how beautiful that is. And I don't mind it going sideways because I get to see it. If it goes up, I can't reach in and go, mmm, Fruit Loops. <laughs> and that Fruit Loops smell really, it comes from that um, bergamot type of fragrance, which is almost like an orangey, sweet candy. Oh, it's just so good, guys. And it's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful flower. So if you guys want one of these, definitely reach out to Ben because I know he's, I haven't seen these anywhere. I've only seen them in his nursery. I'm sure they might sell them elsewhere, but um, that's where I've seen him, seen these the most. And they are, they could be a little bit pricey because they're not something you find anywhere. It's a very strong Vanda. It's a very waxy leaf. So you know it's going to last a long time and it has an intensely great fragrance. So you get so much for your money for this vanda and for me it was what we always say no brainer and there's some upcoming spikes there also in the back now i did talk about that beauty up there in my lats what's in bloom so if you guys want to see that and you want to see this beautiful lamalada three spike that's also in my last what's in bloom ah <sighs> so let's go right here somebody was asking me, how is your fairy tale joy doing? And I was like, it's doing great. It's just right now getting strained. Sorry, I've moved everything around. It's kind of cluttered here now. But here you go. Here's my fairy tale joy. It's very windy as you guys can see today. And my yard has so much leaves. They came and cleaned everything. And in two days, it was like nothing. Let me see if I can put it against something. Wow, iPhone, you don't want to focus on anything. <laughs> All right, there we go. Joy, fairy tale, joy. And I got this from Joseph Wu. And you can find them. Um, I think they're from, from Thailand. You can find them at the Redland International Show and they specialize, him and his whole family, they cross these and they make these pyloric. It's still opening, so they're kind of wonky. They just started opening, but you see this? You can't even, sorry. No, you don't, you don't see this. Which is the labellum? It's kind of hard to tell, right? It's the one where my thumb is on. So the petals on top mimic the lip of the orchid. And that's done through hybridizing and crossing. Sometimes at, at it's been known to happen in nature, but they purposely do this to create this avatar type of flower, which is really, really beautiful. When I, when I got this, I got this at Vicky's Orchids. She had bought it from them and she was selling, reselling it. And I'm like, I want this. It was so cool. She was, I've never seen anything like that. And so now I learned what Peloric means. Thanks to Mr. Julian at Coral Smith my mentor <laughs> he promised he was going to make me an orchid expert <laughs> so we're still that's still in the making so uh look at this this is from moats look at how gorgeous that is that's called the moats adorbs 
it is a profusely blooming orchid look at that it still has more spikes coming out i did put it on this piece of wood it's kind of decaying a little bit but i'm just going to put that same piece on another piece and that'll work as like medium for this orchid even though it's hanging on a mount but i took it out of a tree it was not doing well there it got super red because the sun was hitting it and once i put it here look at this she is so so cute and it has the perfect name moats adorbs because it is it is the most adorable thing i've ever seen <laughs> oh and i brought her down here because she was way up there they do like some heavy lighting for it to shoot out that much blooming so i had her way up there but then i said i don't i don't get to appreciate you so now look at that how cute she is and the flowers the flowers are like little mini cattleyas they remind me of the epidendrum very very cute now down here I discovered this yesterday, Ludmidia, Ludminiana, this is from Carl Smith, and this is a funny story, I had, uh, Julian goes, I'm sending you, um, Julian from Carl Smith, uh, special send me this one because I needed another one to do the chandelier, if you guys haven't seen my chandelier of, of the um, Annie Bell Catlia, I have an episode on that, it's absolutely beautiful, and I put this on the top of the chandelier. I needed one to crown the, the, the chandelier. And all of a sudden, this bloomed. And I'm like, um, this is not an Annie Bell. <laughs> He's like, oh, no. Are you kidding me? I go, yeah, you sent me a Ludmidiana. He's like, well, okay, just keep it. Put it somewhere else, and I'll send you a different one. So it ended up blooming for me again. It's so pretty. It only, it only gave me one bloom. But you know what? I didn't even know it was blooming. It was on a shelf under my terrace and the bloom bloomed on the opposite side of the shelving, so it was facing the wall. So I just put it out here today. I was like, I gotta put you here. Speaking of Coral Smith, this is another one. And I'm so glad I was able to catch this before it withers away, because it's already on its way out. But look at the difference between color of this and this. This is what happens when you buy seedlings and you buy many of them, because all these are from the same. Crawls happy, happy. They have a slight fragrance, very nice fragrance, but look how pretty this red came out. I'm really loving that red. And there's more, I think there's one here. So I'm, I wanna see what color that is, but look at this one. It's such a bright, bright, it's already like, the flower was so pretty, it was so solid. It's already starting to like freckle out and become become a corpse, flower corpse. Now here is from Lee's Orchids from Hawaii. Come on, Papa. There we go. <laughs> and he had gifted me this. Now the plant itself leaves a lot to be desired. <laughs> it's bulbs, you know, it, it, these type of phyases, they tend to do that sometimes. But I gotta tell you, the flower they shoot when they're focused, <laughs> are amazing and it has a beautiful beautiful fragrance and this was a, a very very kind and generous gift from lee of lee orchids in hawaii hawaii <laughs> i was watching a movie last night and they actually pronounce it like i go wow you know you hardly ever hear people pronounce hawaii like that so that's the name and he gifted me one and i think blanca and laz one and this is second or third time it blooms. It's a, it's a, it, it likes to bloom a lot, but it's a very, very pretty flower. And the backside of it is even prettier. It's all white. Look at that on the labellum. Has such a pretty contrast. So I put her up here. She was on the floor because I really wanted to share her with you. Because I, when she's down there, I forget. See, I put her down here. I forget. I, I overlooked. Look her. Now, these are just open. It's the first time I see this one because yesterday they were all closed. This is a Fias. I can't remember the name, but these face out. Hold on. I don't want to break the leaves because these leaves are nice. Look. See? This has such a beautiful fragrance, guys. Look at this. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm trying to do this with a camera and, and 
and zoom in. You guys, if you guys were to see me now, you would cry. I look like I'm playing Twister. <laughs> All right, this is as good as it gets. So anyways, look what a beautiful flower that is. Look at that labellum, how rich in color and so perfectly separated from the white petals. It's not, it's like somebody actually placed it there like a piece of jewelry. And I can't wait. I'll be probably covering her again when she's in full bloom. Now, I don't have the name of this one. I'm gonna look online. I forgot now, I lost the tag. It's easy to lose tags in here. All right, let me get out of this crowded room. Let me see if I don't wanna miss anything because then I come back, I go, oh, I forgot about that one. Oh, well, I was leaving it for last. Well, you guys have seen this one. It's again in bloom. Hold on, let me get up here. This is gonna be much nicer. This yellow dancing lady on Sidium. Ever since I put this baby here on this wood mount, came from the orchid supply store. If you guys wanna get something like that, that size. Now, I wanna tell you guys, all wood decomposes. Unless you get like a tamarind or something like that, that takes forever. So don't freak out when they decompose. All you do is you put them on another mount and that wood becomes sort of a medium. It's not gonna hurt the plant. If anything, it helps it hold, hold a little bit of more moisture. I mean, look at this plant, how well it's doing. This, this mount is beautiful. I love this mount. And ever since I put her there, she loves it. Uh, let me see if I can turn around and show you the finale in here look at this guys look at this dendrobium and look at how many buds it has still to go now i have to give the credit of the grower i've had this now for this is this was an anniversary gift sent to me by jeremy from sw orchids in hawaii and it already it had already come blooming and I was like, how am I gonna get it to bloom the way he did? So Jeremy, if you're watching, look, I think I could humbly say that I did a pretty good job re-blooming it. It is stacked, stacked the same way like when you sent it to me. When you sent it to me, the flowers were all open. But this one is like, I'm seeing the whole process. It is so beautiful, Jeremy. Thank you so much. I really, this this has been such a great gift from you. To see it rebloom like this a year later on my anniversary, it's just absolutely spectacular. And you guys, if you wanna get this, this is a cross of a Nitzer's, no, wait, let me get the name right. <laughs> Nifer's Quest. Oh, hold on. Nifer's Quest crossed with Little Sweet Scent. And it little, little scent is not really an accurate thing because it is a very strong fragrance. My God, the fragrance on this, guys, it is to die for. And I was just watching a video, um, Orchids in Paradise, check it out, by Kelly in Hawaii. And she just covered Jeremy's nursery. And I gotta tell you, I wanted every single thing he showed. His hands with dendrobiums are the wizard. He is the dendrobium wizard, hands down. He has incredible, incredible things. And um, this is just an example of the, of the quality of work he has, or should I say quality of growing. And he's very easy to get a hold. It go on Instagram, go to SW, I'll put the information under there. Because I know several of my friends and viewers have called him and everybody has been very happy. And he is a packaging expert. <laughs> Wait till you see how he packages those orchids. They're pristine. This, this whole thing came in a box filled with flowers and not one flower was damaged. It came in perfect. So Jeremy, if you're watching, your baby's doing quite well in my residency. I really love her. I've thought ab about taking uh, divisions next year, but I just don't want to touch her. She doesn't deserve that. <laughs> she is my queen. I have several queens in here that they share the space and they're okay with that. Nobody fights. 
Now, I've showed you guys this. This is a JVB, Josephine Van Brero, my last What's in Bloom. I talked about it. So if you guys are interested, I also talked about this, but you know what? These spikes had not completely opened. Now I have four beautiful spikes full of Cymbidium Geno's Gem. This is from Roll Smith. And this did win an FCC award, not this plant in particular, but the, the seed, this is a seedling of that plant. And I gotta say guys, owning this for me is my, my treasure. This is my gold treasure. This is it for me. You know, owning this, I could retire <laughs> and not get any more. The cranberry and yellow gold that it has, the abundance of flowers. It's just such a delicate and gorgeous Cymbidium. And I did have it here. This is where it faces. If you guys notice, the plants want to go towards the sun, so they kind of push out that way. It doesn't bother me, honestly. I could always do this, and then it'll start now growing this way. Or it'll give me some new shoots after it's done blooming. But it is a very healthy um, Cymbidium. Be aware that when you bloom this much, you will get some yellow leaves sometimes because it's pulling so much energy. And this, she had seven spikes and only four of those seven open. She's a young plant. I'm surprised I got her to push out this many babies. To me, this was really, really like a shocker. I didn't think, you know, it was, it was still too young of a plant, but she did it. See, I think there's one here. Yeah, I just took it out. It dried out. But I'm not complaining. I got these gorgeous, gorgeous flowers to admire and to appreciate. And also, I spoke about this baby here. Which is my Mimi Palmer with Tessalata. Also from Coral Smith. This was one of the first Vandas I think I bought over there at their facility. Ooh, sorry. Come on, focus, focus. Apple, you gotta get your phone better. Seriously. <laughs> this focusing thing is just getting really old. And you know what I hear from other YouTubers too, which is funny. I thought I was the only one complaining. I was watching my aquarium videos, you know, these guys I watch in England, and they were saying the same thing. They were complaining about the focusing and also several people here. <laughs> so it's not me alone anymore. Now here, the only thing I have is my bicolor, the jewel orchid. But I did feature her already in my last What's in Bloom. I'm repotting her in something similar to that. So that way it doesn't hang this way. But if you guys want to see more of that, you can go ahead to my last What's in Bloom. But now we're going to do before... But well, we're going to do this, and then I'm going to show you what's on the trees, and then we'll close the channel. But this, this is what's going to blow you away. Because I am still processing. I hadn't been back here in two days, and when I came in here, I was like, what in the world? It's like, to me, this is the definition of spring. It was almost like overnight, they all started popping open. It got very warm all of a sudden. So it's pushing the flowers to open all. And I mean, I wouldn't even know where to stop. This was a gift from Laz. I love this Florida rainbow. But guys, look at this display of Philanopsis. I don't care how jaded you are with Philanopsis. This is just absolutely stunning these colors these flowers each one tells their own little story you know it's just a character I I sat here last night when I saw this I was like oh my god I gotta clean these leaves because <laughs> these flowers are just too gorgeous this is Terry's this one already has been open for a while I mean they do last long this is Terry's favorite it's one of my favorite too so is this one right here. 
But what I love about fowls is that they cross them so much that they get these crazy new patterns and colors. But the thing is, you may not see it again. Sometimes they cross these, these uh, you may not get these patterns or colors anymore. Because sometimes they just cross them, sell them, and that's it. The batch is gone. So when I see something strange and unique, I grab it. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that because it's strange and unique, you're not going to see it again. But you never know if they discontinue it. Look at this. This spotted red. And the other thing I noticed this year is the abundance of spikes in one plant. Like this is a mother plant who gave me several flowers, but then it has this baby who gave me a spike with flowers. So it's like, so did this one. I was like, oh my God, this one's doing the same thing. Let me see, where is it? I had it around here. I already forgot. <laughs> oh my God, where was it? Maybe I moved it. Uh, I'll probably find it. You know when you're looking for something, you don't find it, but then when you're not, it's there in your face all the time. That was one of those plants. I was like, my God, that plant has a keiki and the keiki has two spikes. But I don't know. I don't know what I did with it. It, it mysteriously disappeared. But anyways, let's go to the big queen here, the center queen of it all. For you guys that know, you know, this is the beautiful and regal Shiluriana. This species, Philonopsis, is one of the most thought out and most wanted in the collectors of the orchid world. They are finicky. They're beautiful. They smell amazing. They'll give you a spectacular show of flowers. Once you figure them out, I figured this one out one day. I put her in a mount and for six years now i believe i've had this I, I it came with two little tiny tiny leaves i was like what am i gonna do with this and look at her now here's the name i wish i had the name of the place that i got it it was at the fort lauderdale orchid show and um i went because blanca had showed something on our videos and i i wanted to go get one the um, rasha sinii from smiley <laughs> and i saw this the display of this and I go, oh, I want it. I go, well, here, and when I saw what they were selling for $25, it was these little, <laughs> I was like, okay, let's give it a try. And I'm so glad I took a chance. So guys, don't be afraid just because you don't know and it's exotic or, or it's a species, just go for it. It's the only way you're gonna know. It's the only way you're gonna figure out if, if this plant does well in your environment or not. If it doesn't, well, it doesn't. You know how many orchids I've bought that I wish they do well in my environment and they don't? So we move on and we look for something else, but just don't be afraid of it. Because this was one that I was, I was like, you know what, let me try it out. I know that this is something that a lot of people talk about in their collections and you know, as they grow bigger, they become very valuable uh, orchids. But I just, I said, let's do it. Let's see what happens. And I'm so grateful to that because she has been very rewarding for so many years. And that's why she's right in the dead center of my quick tent. Now, right behind it, guys, I discovered this, of course, yesterday as well. Let me see if I can take her down because it'll be better for you guys to see. This will work. All right, there we go. Look at that bubble film, guys. How adorable is that? Now, when I saw the photo on this thing, I saw that they grow in batches of clusters, right? So I was like, oh, I've never had like a bubble film like that. And when I looked and really focused in, look at all the little buds that are in there. For you species lovers. <laughs> now the tag is really, 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 really like worn out. So I have to be very careful. Bulbophyllum ambrosia. All right, guys. So if you want to collect this, that is the name. You can give Lee. Lee's in Hawaii. So I, I don't, I don't think he, he, um, 
don't know if he ships. I'm sure he does. But you can catch him at the international shows here in Florida at um, Redland. He's usually in Redland. And I'll tell you, everything I've gotten from him has done so well. And always blooms and gives beautiful results. Like this right here from Brethren's. I took this from Philip's hands because this was from his collection. And he had it at the Redland show for a It's funny how everything is kind of like, it almost feels like I scripted this. I promise you I did not. It's just flowing that way. <laughs> I got this at the Redland show. It was a hundred dollars. Look, it still has a price tag there. And he's like, I've got to part with it because I have no more space and I'm making space for new stuff. And I was like, you know what? I have this space and I think it should come with me. And he says, I think that's a great idea. <laughs> And look, Phil, Philip, look how beautiful she's doing. I did not disappoint you. I've taken great care of her. She's blooming everywhere. Now, I did notice because the sun is shifting just from that screen. Look at that. I had this literally. I mean, you could see the sun right there. I had it like that. See? And that little shine right there that you see from the sun going through the trees was yellowing it. Now, I hope it didn't damage. I don't think it did. I touch it. It's very firm. I don't feel any anything like dying off. I just think it's sunburned. So I flipped her around and she looks fine. I really hope I didn't damage her because this one is one of my favorite, favorite um, novelty files in here. She is gorgeous. Such a pretty pattern. And it's so cute how it, it's like, oh, you think I get, I gave you uh, all? Check out here. And this was hiding under the leaf. <laughs> it was under this big leaf. I'm like, oh, no, you got to come outside and see the world. Look at that. So, brethren, good job, guys. You guys are so good. And the stuff you sell is just such great quality. Like my buddies, again, at Coral Smith who are not that far from Brethren's. Now, Brethren's not open to the public, but they do a lot of shows here in Florida. So you guys can check them out on Instagram, send them a message. Most of these orchid people in Florida have Instagram. You send them a direct message, they'll respond right away. This is the Tejas Giant from Coral Smith. And I did a full evaluation of Tejas Giant and Texas Giant. And Tejas Giant is more saturated. At least that's my observation that's what i noticed and this is one of my oldest kroll smith fowls now that i know how to grow fowls very well and healthy before i used to like the novelty ones i used to kill them all the time i, I don't know i just couldn't get it right and this is one of them that almost almost left our reality <laughs> because it was like only two leaves left I put her on a mount and then I, oh, I don't know. It's just the poor thing went through hell. Seriously, I didn't think it was gonna do such a great comeback. So this is to show you guys, and this is, I think before I was even recording my videos. So no, I, I was recording videos. It's probably like in the, in the first year, you'll see it. This is a good comeback story. I wish I had pictures of the way it looked. I never took pictures or film when it got really bad. That would have been a great record of what it was but it, it literally looked like imagine just two leaves like this and pruny and i was like i'm not giving up on you so i repotted her in spag moss new zealand spag moss and you know a lot of people say do not pot and glaze here's a perfect example guys that's a glazed pot no holes only on the bottom for drainage and look how that plant is doing and i brought this plant back from its death in that pot so it all depends on how you water here's another glaze pot this is full glaze shiny glaze there's no pores on that this is a tetraspis um wilson and it's filled this is going to be a show and look at those leaves it's not so i know that a lot of you were concerned when i talked about glaze pot see i'm telling you <laughs> it feels scripted i did not it just so happens that all three of these are glazed this is a chinese glazed pot as well you know these don't have any pour and look at this 
Look at the leaves. It's a healthy plant and it's in sphag moss. What is it? I put styrofoam bits on the very bottom. I put moss on the top and I don't wet every day. I touch it. This is wet, right? I did not water today. I watered yesterday and it's still wet. If I water today, now I'm gonna start drowning that poor plant. So it doesn't, this doesn't matter. What matters is you, how much water you put in it. So if you like a glazed pot, by all means be more careful to your watering, but it does not mean you can't plant them in there because I'm showing you proof on plants that have been there for quite a while. I would say this one's at least two years, maybe a little less. So it, they're doing great. Just put styrofoam bits on the bottom and you're gonna see it like completely drain and not, not really drown your, your plant. Now this one is my showstopper fowl. This is my standard fowl. I used to have a name for this one. A viewer of mine identified it. It was awesome that they identified it. It is a registered um, Philanopsis. It is known for their giant leaves. Look at that how big that is. Now this is from overfeeding. So if you guys get this, slow down on your feeding. Super Thrive will do that if you put too much of it. But look at the massive, massive spike on that. It's from one spike, you're getting multiple spikes. So when this is blooming and these flowers last for months and months and months on end, you guys are gonna be seeing this in many uh, what's in blooms. Now you probably wanted to know what this is. I do have this on my um, last what's in bloom, so I won't cover it now. I'm loving these. These are fragrant by the way. I got these over at Ritter and is a registered Philanopsis. And this one I got, which I love the color. It was from this mystery vendor. <laughs> we call it, Terry and I call him the mystery man. He did not want me promoting him. He did not want me promoting his flowers. He did not want me promoting his business. And I thought he was misunderstanding me. And I told him, oh, no, no, I'm doing it so you can get business. Um, I'm not going to use this for myself to sell orchids. I guess I thought he probably thought I'm, I was an orchid guy or something. I go, I'm a YouTuber. <laughs> he goes, yeah, yeah, I'm not interested. I go, okay. And I've seen him several times at the shows and I just skip right by him because, you know, I'm not going to disrespect. If you don't want it, you don't want it. I don't get it. I mean, it's all, it's more to his advantage than mine, honestly. But um, he just didn't care. But he does have pretty fouls. And this one came from MS Orchid, which I thought it was such a beautiful spa looking orchid, like something you put in a spa. Now, a lot, a lot of these fowls, these special, I call them specialty fowls because you know, you don't see this like in your regular supermarket. You may see something like that. That you probably see, right? Because they do sell a lot of those, and especially that. But when you go into this, now you're going into specialty crosses, things that you're not gonna find anywhere. So if you wanna find super cool looking fowls or start collecting like me, I started collecting again last year from MS Orchids. And you're in Florida, try them out. I'll put, you know, on my What's in Blooms, I always put information in my description box so you can get the, the information of all the vendors I I talk about in my channel. And this is last but not least, oops, sun's hitting right above, not a good time to film this, is my Tetraspis. Um, I actually tagged this. My viewers helped me out. I do not see a thing, so I hope we recorded it. <laughs> Flores Gold cross with Fowl Hieroglyphica. And this was another one that I thought was going to go bye-bye. But after putting her in this mount, it was the magic touch. And look, she's always giving these gorgeous buds. She is a heavy bloomer, especially during spring and summer. 
and I quite, quite enjoy. She's still opening. She still has, you know, it's been kind of cool. Today's the first day I feel like that's why I have the fan on here. Just to give a nice breeze in here because today's the first day that I'm actually sweating. <laughs> oh, I almost forgot Mr. Renee. Mr. Renee Marquis. How are you, sir? just opened as well another one of the surprises that i saw when i came in i was like wow and i noticed that even in the old spikes so don't ever cut the spikes on these they're sequential meaning that they reshoot blooms at the tip of their spike this is a brand new spike but i'll i won't cut it after it stops blooming let me see if i can get on that she's kind of he's kind of low down here what a pretty epicatlia huh Hold on. Oh, sorry. Here's a name. Tyler is uh, the last word that's... But look at what a beautiful profile that flower has. And I know some of you aeroid lovers are probably watching the background and saying, Oh, talk about those things. I don't know much about them. <laughs> I just buy them because I like them. And I figured out how to, how to grow them through trial and error. But I, you know, I do have them tagged. Like this is an Ontarian um, Vichii sup, uh, Super Narrow, which means this gets even longer and more narrow as they get older they are super slow growers by the way but look how pretty those leaves are got these over at the crawl smith um oh my god what do they do it's in november they do the auction <laughs> and this i got i forgot where i got this oh i bought this from a vendor that sells only aeroids i forgot their name now they're from brazil but look how beautiful gave me two leaves i lost this one i lost everything it had three leaves and i lost them all and i said well let me see if it'll and it pushed out two more so now i kind of figured them out i have more back there but it's really hot in here can you hear in my voice oh look he opened two this is a stinky one this is called bulbophyllum. film hold on so i did tag him but I think well, it's Wilbur Chang, but I misspelled it or miss. Oh, I just noticed this has water. See, look, did you guys just see that? What a great catch on video. This was from watering yesterday. Now, if I would have watered again today and then again tomorrow and then the next day, what do you think would happen to this, bu this bubble film? It won't last because it has been highly humid so you have to learn your environment. It's very important. And you work with your environment. I can't quite get it there, guys. There we go. It's Will Burr Chen. Oh, because I think I misspelled it. But anyway, that goes to show you, this is a, a great plant. It's been doing beautifully there. And um, it's just growing and growing and growing more and more. It gave me so many flowers this year. So that's why it's important, going back to the water situation, learn your environment. A lot of you guys out there are always asking me, how do you water, how many times? It doesn't matter. Because if your environment is not the same as mine, I could be damaging you by telling you how I water. What I have to tell you is I water under these conditions in my environment, if you have the same environment, then you could probably do it. And I know a lot of people have used my system and they tell me it's been very successful. So I'm super happy that a lot of what I teach here does work, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna work in a cooler or colder environment or even a drier environment, like growing orchids on your trees. Here in Florida, go upstate Florida, just past West Palm Beach and doing this is not going to work because it gets really cold up there. I mean, Apopka, Florida over at, at Kroll. Sorry, guys, I had my phone on airplane mode, but for some reason, a call did come in. I don't know how that works. It's happened already twice. But anyways, this is a Moats 
Uh, I don't have a tag for this. They do sell in the shows, these three, four, 50, I think it is, Vandas. And I just like to put them on treats. Because look at this, you know, they, they, they do so well. I've covered these already. These are Josephine Van Brero crosses with Kawadi. They're already going. But um, just to show you guys that if you do have trees and you live in a warm climate with humidity that doesn't go below 40 degrees, usually here, if it goes, the lowest we had, I think this year was 49 or 50. No, no, 51 or 52. It's very rare for this area to get colder than 50. And when it does happen, it's one day, maybe two days, enough for the orchid to survive it. Because Miami, South Miami is very tropical, but we do get our cold, our cold spells here and there. Because some of you did ask me in the last, when you mean cold spells, well, what we mean by cold spells are cold snaps. You know, it goes down from 70 degrees to 50, you know, like boom overnight but it only happens overnight so the orchids really what they suffer is leaf loss they lose one or two leaves but they don't die and this is also one of those three four fifty this is a josephine vambrero with a vanda blitz i can't read that heart <laughs> blitz heart <laughs> and look it's got another little spike here I had these on a wire, and you know what? For a whole year, nothing. Took them out of the wire, put them here about a month and a half ago, maybe, maybe two months, and look. <laughs> so sometimes the trees encourage the orchid to shoot a spike because it feels at home. The, the, the orchid feels in its natural habitat, like that beautiful arachnids I have over there. Now, I wanna come back here and show you guys how pretty this turned out. Thanks to my partner, Lewis, and myself. These things are Florida pine. I have covered this already before in my last What's in Bloom. But look how beautiful my bonsais are doing. Ever since I put them here, cleaned them up. I have to clean the, the inside because it rained a lot, so weed grows. And um, this was one from, from Miss smiley that was tiny i got it two years ago and finally i put it in a really nice bonsai pot and i'm going to plant uh right here on the on the bark a um a mini orchid it's gonna be really cute so for you guys that have been following the what's in bloom this is what's left of my louise fuchs all the the girls in the in the group that was with me, I think now own a Luis Fuchs. I'm not sure. I think, um, yeah, Melissa got one. Blanca got one. I think Wendy has one, maybe? Teresita needs to get one. Oh my God, the smell on this is just ridiculous. <laughs> it's just, it's so like, it's such a show off. <laughs> it's beautiful, it's colorful, it lasts forever. And the fragrance is just amazing. And this year she said, you know what, dad? You were so sweet to me by putting me in this big old pot and giving me some room to grow. I'm going to give you four full spikes. And it did. And every single one bloomed. And this one is about to start blooming soon, too. This is um, Tebanese's. I think that's how you say it. Oh, I can't. Oh. Teb Here we go. I did my own tags and I can't even say the name. Hold on. Tebicinus. <laughs> Tebicinus. I guess it would be Tebicinus. So it is a, an orchid from Coral Smith. And I can't wait to see it. And this one too. This is beautiful. I don't know what this is. When it blooms, I'm going to ask you guys to tell me. No one has been able to identify this. It has four spikes for the first time. Wait until you guys see the flowers on this Shemberkia. I got it at Vicky's Orchids. It is a spectacular flower. It has red. It's very Hawaiian. Reds and orange and yellows and purples. It's just ridiculous. So I'm super happy it's going to give me four wonderful spikes. All right, my friends, I think, you know what? I'm going to take you to the front just to show you briefly how that's doing. And uh, it's actually not the front. I keep saying the front. It's the side of my house. <laughs> 
that I can show you what's growing there. I did a little pit stop here because I did show you my lychee tree. I want to show you how many bees are going to town. It's like a buffet up there. I think I just scared them off. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Anyways, it's being very well pollinated. You could already see. Sorry, I don't want to go too fast. You could already see some of the lychee growing. Those little green balls are just ready to grow into juicy, delicious, sweet lychee. And this was from uh, Kiko Bonsai. He sells uh, from cuttings from his own tree. And he did. He told me, I guarantee you when it gives, it's going to give so much because it, it was an air layering, I think they call it, where they root the branch. Let me see. It's so pretty. And um, it guarantees an abundance of lychee. So I'll keep you guys posted. I wanted to show you these, my epidendrons, because I never, ever share the orchids that grow on the side of my house or under my trees because it's on the other side. But lo and behold, I, I didn't have a lot of luck with them. And I guess this is the year. I decided, let me put them out here where my dry area is, where I have all my cacti, this massive cacti. I don't know what happened here, but it was weird. And um, it really, really likes this dry area. And look at that. I got this at Ophi's. If you guys want this, this blood red, I think this is called Fire, Epidendrum Fire Red or something like that. Of course, it has that nice little touch of yellow in the center. And it's just a gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous tone of red and yellow. So yeah, you guys, I, some of you said good luck with the epidendrums, you know, growing. It's true, they don't do that well in my yard, but I think I found the magic touch. Especially with these, because these were very delicate. They kept on drying out. I don't want to get in the sun. And look how pretty they are. I had them in the back and they just did not like it. Let's go over to the other tree. I have covered this and I will continue covering this because it's just too spectacular not to. This is Cher's Dream. Dendrobium, Cher's Dream. I got this from my buddy David from Morning Dove uh, Ranch. And he has sold so many of these since I visited his, I did a home visit, you guys have not seen it. Go back about maybe six, seven months. And there's a gentleman holding a massive dendrobium like this in his hands. That video is his yard. And he has these all over his yard. And they are super, super fast growers. Not only that, as soon as, hold on, as soon as the, the spring started setting in, all these spikes started coming out. I'm like, whoa, I could not believe. I told him, I go, man, that, that dendrobium is it's a heavy bloomer. He goes, once it's established, see, I established it. I literally put the mount he gave me against my uh, flamboyant tree is these kind of trees, by the way. That's a flamboyant, which breaks the light beautifully, but still lets enough in to help it bloom. So you don't want to put it under a very dense, dense tree because you may not have blooms. And these are yellow oncidiums given to me by Mercedes. And they're doing wonderful. They're so stuck on there. I finally got them to start. I, I feel now like vindicated because I always tried to grow on trees like Blanca does. Hers do so well on trees. It's like second nature to those orchids. And mine were like, ugh, they would just get dry. And I'm like, what is going on? It's not like we live in different cities. We're like, right, we're, we're neighbors pretty much. It's like, it doesn't make sense. And so it was the wrong trees. I started putting them on these and look at this. And I told her, I go, it's such an irony because as soon as I said, Oh, I wish my, my dendrobiums, they don't look good on my trees. I think I'm gonna take them all off. She goes, well, I don't understand why they're not doing well. Try to do something different. I went to the yard and they were all budding. And I told her, now I look like a liar. <laughs> I wanna show you this before I rip it. <laughs> so I'm doing, I'm being so, look at this flower, guys. This is a vine I put in here. We do have to clean it up because they're getting a little bit out of control. 
but I've had this here forever. I got this in Tampa. It does control the mosquito population. Some people say it doesn't. I've opened this thing and seen dead mosquitoes in there. So that by definition is controlling the population. And it's grown like over my, my neighbor and my fence what divides us. But look at that, it's crazy, 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 crazy. <laughs> it has so many of these flowers. But if you guys look at the beginning of my channel, the intro, I have one of these on my head. <laughs> and then this right here, this red thing, it's also, I think, in the beginning of my channel. I'm kind of had my hands up in the air. Anyways, let's look over here. I'll just briefly show you these fowls that are growing up. These are my oldest orchids here. I have them in my Arecas. I have a Nuzmums. There's another one. These are all that I bought like at Costco or Sam's. When I uh, first moved here, I started experimenting to see what would do well on the trees. So, of course, you know, inexpensive fowls were the way to go. And look, they're still doing. And, and believe it or not, th that one back there is the first one I put up. And it was a gift. Laz gave me that for my birthday. It was the first birthday I celebrated here when I moved in. And I put it there because I was like, you know what? I think it's going to do well and I want to see it from the inside. And that fowl, is, that's called a kaleidoscope. It is always, always, always blooming. Every time Laz comes, he goes, is, is it in bloom? I go, of course. It never stops. Just like this one. This one I think I got at a place called BJ's which is like a Costco and they sell them super inexpensive for like, I think it's 10 or $12. All right, guys, let's close this up. It's been quite a journey today, but this has been a really, really, really good what's in bloom, at least for me. I'm humbly saying that because I've been very busy at work. I've had a lot on my plate. Um, I had a lot of car issues that I had to fix. I was sick as well. I mean, so many things happen. You guys have no idea. Um, it's just, I'm just happy that I'm doing this What's in Bloom today because it's, it's I've been in a, on, a, on a roller coaster ride. And so the fact that I hadn't had time to come back here yesterday when I fed is when I started discovering so many things and I'm like, I have to do a What's in Bloom. This is just too good to not do. <laughs> Anyways, guys, I will see you on the other side. All right, guys, I did it without melting away. I'm, it's so hot. <laughs> it is true Miami weather today. It's beautiful blue skies, very little clouds. Amazing, amazing feeling of spring is in the air. And it's my favorite time of year. And that's why I really had a good time filming this one for you guys, because it's my favorite episodes. It's where I feel the most comfortable because it's my own environment and I get to show you the progress of everything that I've been doing. And like I said, when I very first started this channel, this is a journey I wanna take with you guys in growing my orchids, learning and sharing what I learn. And not all the time it's gonna be a perfect experiment, not all the time it's gonna work, but that's how we learn and grow. And I think that the exciting part is within the discovery of that. I think for me, that's where I get very excited. Like, oh, okay, now I know that this doesn't work, but this may work. And so that's how we, we move forward and we evolve and we have a collection like this. I never imagined having a collection like this. Never in a billion years. I tell Lewis, I sit down sometimes and I look at it and I, and I always say, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm so grateful that I have this because it's a lot of hard work. It's something that takes a lot of dedication, discipline, a lot of, of of wanting to learn because I'm always back here. And that's the best advice I can give you guys for your own orchids. You know, you always reach out to me. Uh, you're asking me always like for that magic thing. There, the magic thing is your own observation, is you hanging out with your orchids, looking at them, seeing what makes a difference. I do that with, <clears throat> excuse me, with my fish. I'm going back into my fish tank world. I've always been into it. It's, I'll share that with you guys. I might do a whole episode on building an aquascape. So as I do with my plants, I do with my fish, I do with everything in life. You have to observe, analyze, write it down, and try to make it better. 
through testing and through experimentations. Of course, responsibly. So that's why you do heavy observations so you don't do something just randomly and wish for the best. So anyways, that is my advice for you guys today. Thank you so much. Thank you for all the compliments on my hair. This is me, all natural. I'm actually gonna let it grow a little bit longer. I, after doing all that stuff to my hair, if you guys are just starting to follow me, I had platinum white hair. So after doing all that bleaching, it just, it takes a toll on your hair. So now I don't do anything, no color, nothing. I did darken this, so this looks normal because <laughs> people thought I was coloring my hair brown. So thank you, thank you for noticing and thank you for the compliments, I highly appreciate it. I am doing now Outback Nell. <laughs> Grow a beard down here and lots of air, no, just kidding. So anyways, I will try to leave whatever shows are upcoming in the very end, uh, as I normally do. And thank you for sticking by. Thank you for sticking by a very long episode filled with so many beautiful flowers. I am Nelson, you've been watching Nature Now, and remember to always, always, Keep it green. See you next time.